Hi and welcome everyone. Thanks for attending our Criticism and Forrester Research Analyst webinar, Four Steps to Superior Mobile Customer Experience. In this webinar, we will discuss the new ways to enhance your mobile strategy and engage with more customers. We are very pleased to have as a featured guest speaker, Julie Ask, Vice President and Principal Analyst for Forrester Research, as well as Kalyan Ramanathan, Criticism CMO. Uh, just some quick housekeeping items. Uh, all lines will be muted. Please type any questions in, that you may have in the Q&A box on the screen. We will get to as many as we can at the end of the presentation. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, we will discuss how you can receive Julie's upcoming book, The Mobile Mind Shift. Okay, let's begin. It's my pleasure to introduce Julie Ask, Vice President and Principal Analyst of Forrester Research. Hi, Julie. Hi, Tim. Thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, so what we want to talk about today, as Tim alluded to, is mobile engagement and how you can use analytics to optimize performance. Uh, so let's dig in. What I wanted to do is I wanted to start with a story of a company that we many of us are very familiar with that has fundamentally transformed a customer experience using mobile, uh, how they've done it, and what the financial benefits have been. Uh, if we move to the next slide, for those of you who live in an urban, you know, an urban environment, you know, perhaps even in San Francisco, uh, you can use the application Uber. Um, it's, you know, at a high level today, at least, it's a car service, so it provides transportation, you know, from point A to point B. And it's as simple as opening up the app, uh, clicking a button that says request pickup here, uh, and then after you do that, you get confirmation that, hey, you know, so-and-so Allison is on the way, she's got 4.8 stars. Um, you know, and it also provides a lot of transparency of information. Uh, when she's going to be arriving, how long it's going to be, where she is on the road. You can see if it's traffic conditions, if you need to message the driver maybe about a change of location. Um, it's all really possible. It's a phenomenally convenient experience. Uh, it's not only easy to do business with Uber, but it's also very uh, enjoyable to do business with Uber. And I think for any of us on the phone, right, and I like to use travel examples a lot because so many of us travel, We've all, all experienced the anxiety of not knowing if a taxi is going to show, especially if we're getting a pickup from home. And in an app like Uber, it's something that seems, you know, very simple and straightforward, but they were the first to do it, where they actually show the car progressing, in this case, around the San Francisco airport to come get me, so I know exactly how much time I have and when the car is going to show up. If we compare that, if we just move to the next slide, to the process that we all know from four, five, even ten years ago, right? Who hasn't been on hold for five or ten minutes waiting for this process to unfold? You've called, you've like mucked your way through an IVR, uh, maybe you've spoken to somebody on dispatch who's put you on hold, uh, they've spoken to you, told you that a taxi is on its way, someone who, right, who's been licensed, uh, and then you're waiting, right? Um, and how many times have you been on the way to the airport and you've called back? Is it coming? Is the cab on the way? Um, and somebody dispatches, oh, of course, it's on the way. Uh, I, I would tell you I haven't missed a flight yet, um, but I've certainly been very late getting to the airport and been very stressed about this process. And then along comes a company like Uber using the mobile phone and what in retrospect seems like a very simple idea has completely transformed this customer experience by eliminating most of these steps uh, and providing a lot of transparency of information about what's going to happen. If you don't mind, fast, uh, just hitting the next button, please. So mobile eliminates both these steps, and then if you go forward, you know, it just has, it is a result of creating a customer experience that not only meets my needs because it offers transportation, it's easy, and they're very enjoyable to work with, not only that, but it has a financial uh, benefit as a side. Uh, recently in August of 2013, when Uber went out to raise money, it did so based on a $3.4 billion valuation just after being in business for a couple of years. So really, the benefits of offering a phenomenal customer experience, the financial benefits are very high. Um, in fact, uh, each year Forrester does uh, an index of, of companies that do well in the customer experience index uh, versus those who perform poorly, and those companies who uh, do well with customer experience uh, outperform the S&P 500 by almost 40% in any given year uh, versus those that are laggards. So there's true financial benefits tied to providing a phenomenal customer experience. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that as we look forward. So the agenda that we put together today is how is mobile impacting customer experiences? What are the trends or why are the stakes so high in 2014 given some of the trends? And then if we think about the topic today, those four steps, what steps do you need to take to win in the mobile moments? So let's start with how mobile is impacting customer experiences. 
So the first thing that you should know is that there's a phenomenon going on that we call the mobile mind shift. And this is the expectation that I can get what I want in my immediate context and in my moment of need. So many of you on the phone, probably all of you on the phone own a smartphone, and you can probably think about the 100, 200 times per day that you reach for your phone, you glance at your phone, maybe it's a quick message from your spouse, uh, maybe you've got a student that's in college that needs money transferred into his or her account. Uh, maybe you're placing an order or getting a reservation for the restaurant this evening. But there's this expectation that we can do almost anything that we want to do in our moment of need and do so relatively simply on our mobile phones. And this is a phenomenon that Forrester calls the mobile mind shift. So as we think a little bit, as we go to the next slide and think a little bit about what that means, there's this notion that you need to serve customers in their moments along their journey. And as I said, I like to use an airline example uh, because it's something that so many of us do. If we think about this notion of context or time relative to an event, I have very different needs as a consumer depending on the time relative to this event. So if I'm two weeks out from the event, maybe I need to change my reservation. If I'm a couple of days out, maybe I've realized I'm coming back late on a Friday night from New York and so I want an upgrade. And if I'm two hours before this event, this flight, then I need to check in. I want to know the departure time. I want to know the arrival time. I want to know if I'm going to make it in time for my meeting. And so my needs are very different based on my context. And then whether it's I'm flying or it's two hours, two days, or two weeks after that event, my needs change. And so the notion of understanding this context and generating insights through analytics and the performance of your app that allow you to understand this context and serve the right information and the right service to your customers in that mobile moment or that moment of need is how you need to engage with your consumers as we look forward on mobile apps. And as we say to our clients, as you click forward here, you need to be able to win in these mobile moments. Okay. And so if we think about what has changed specifically when it comes to mobile, there are three things that consumers expect on mobile devices. Uh, the first is immediacy. Um, if this is something that I need to do in five or ten days' time, I can do that at home. I can do it on a PC. It's not something that needs my immediate attention. Uh, mobile also has to be quite simple. Right? If I get on a mobile phone, I become very task-oriented. Uh, the average length of a session on a mobile phone might only be 40 seconds to a minute, and I don't want to wade through like a home screen, a static home screen. Uh, I, need to, I need it to be relevant to me and very contextual so that I can get something done, get in and get out So, over the course of the day. And then the final thing is it needs to be very contextual, meaning very relevant. So it's taking into account that I'm two hours before that flight versus two days before that flight when you're thinking about what it is that I need to do. And the sum of all three of these components is something that we refer to as convenience. Uh, my colleague James McQuivy has a lot of research that he's written with the basic notion being if a service or a product is fundamentally more convenient than what I'm already doing, then I'm likely to adopt it. So convenience is the, is the key to success uh, when it comes to mobile, just like any other product, and these are the three things that define convenience. So let me just give you a quick example of how of companies that have worked well with one of these attributes. So one of my favorite examples of immediacy is a company called WTSO, or Wine Still Sold Out. Uh, it was a couple of brothers in New Jersey that started the business, um, and initially they weren't even online. I don't think they even went online until the late 90s or early 2000s. Um, and one of the reasons they didn't want to go online is because they thought it would complicate their business. Uh, so eventually these two brothers, Joe and Arnie, uh, Joe talked Arnie into taking the business online, but, only in, but Arnie's compromise was we're only going to go online if we can sell one thing at a time. So what they do is they sell one wine, and you can see they sent you a notification here. This is going on sale. Once it's sold out, it's gone. Um, and that's, that was great. It was great for their business. But one of the things that happened is they started to get complaints from their customers because folks were missing sales. I'd be in meetings during the day. I wouldn't be near my email. I'd be at my kid's soccer game on the weekend. And so they had a lot of pressure from their customers to go mobile. Um, and since they'd gone mobile um, and created this app, you can see the push-based notification, price, discounts, uh, what the quality of the wine is. You can get more details if you go into the app. And it takes about three clicks to make this purchase. Uh, their business has grown phenomenally since implementing mobile. And today they do more than two-thirds of their sales on weekends through their mobile device because folks are – it's immediate and I can make a decision and I don't miss the opportunity. So now let me give you an example of simple on the next slide. Uh, this is an example from a bank in Australia, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. 
And this is an app that they created for home buyers to do, generate leads for their mortgage business. And so rather than, as you can imagine, the, the way we're, we've been taught to search is to type in an address, type in a location, find a dot on a map, and then click and pull up information. So what this app does is it uses augmented reality. I can pan around the neighborhood, and the price or the recent price of a home will pop up. So if I'm standing in a neighborhood thinking about, well, what should I really, you know, is this house really a good deal? I can just pan my phone around the neighborhood, home prices pop up, and it's a very simple way of discovering and consuming information on my phone and that's what we expect as customers today, and it's what your customers expect, even if these examples come from other industries. Uh, and Commonwealth Bank of Australia drives at least 1% of their mortgage leads today from those that are using this app. And then finally, an example of how companies are using context, not unlike the airline example that I showed you earlier. Uh, this is from the homepage of SPG. If you open up the app on any given day, it assumes that you want to book a room or make a reservation. However, when you get within 48 hours of your next stay, not unlike the airline example, uh, the home page changes and lets you know, hey, this is your reservation, this is the address. Um, it even goes so far to give you a room number once you've checked in and it gives you directions. But their assumption about what your needs are and what your motivations are as a customer change based on this context or in this case time relative to a reservation or lack thereof. Next step. So your customers have shifted and so you need to shift as a company, and your customer must meet these new expectations. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from my colleague James McQuivy, who I find to be brilliant if you've never had a chance to read his material, is he says that when consumers adopt new technology, they do old things in new ways, and when people internalize technology, they find new things to do. And for the most part, when it comes to mobile, we're still doing things, old things in new ways. And oftentimes when I talk about this quote, which I think is brilliant, I often put the word uh, companies inside rather than consumers. So when companies adopt technology, they do old things in new ways. And when companies internalize technology, they begin to think about the new things that they can do. And this is really at the point when we think about those that are innovating, uh, those that are really reaping the financial benefits of mobile, a company like Uber with a $3.4 billion valuation, they're really thinking about what are the new opportunities to transform customer experiences with mobile. Uh, which is the heart of things today. Uh, there are many different types of mobile moments that impact your customer experience, and I'll just give you a handful of examples. So the first thing to note is that mobile moments occur throughout the customer journey. Uh, this is an example, this is a screenshot, so to speak, of Forrester's uh, portrayal of the customer journey with the six steps, discover, explore, buy, use, ask, and engage. And there are moments throughout. Um, you know, there are marketing moments up front, uh, there are moments when you're trying to influence a sale. Uh, there's making the impulse purchases like WTSO. Uh, when I'm using products, getting customer service, all the way through loyalty and back around the circle. Um, and let me give you an example of what I mean by a mobile moment in each of these cases. So for those companies who you may not know who your customers are, and a lot of CPG companies fall into this category, uh, customers aren't necessarily going to download your app. It's not like a bank or an insurance company. Uh, where I have to log in, I have an account, and I expect my mobile phone to have account services, you're looking for opportunities to either create utility or entertainment for your customers. And so we do what you call manufacturing mobile moments. And so in this case, uh, P&G sponsored an application called Sitter Squad to find clean restrooms. So something adjacent to their brand and associated with their brand that offers utility and the frequency of engagement that they have with their customers went way up. The next example we look at is influencing sales. Um, and this is a Deloitte digital forecast based on some Forrester data. But at the end of the day, and for those of you who may be in retail, the e-commerce number isn't that big. Uh, this year it's going to be 5, 6, 7, 8% of total e-commerce. But the real potential of mobile is to influence a, a purchase when somebody is in a store or it may be part of a, a research process that they go through across a number of different devices. But if we look at the forecast that mobile will influence $689 million in sales in 2016, it's a huge billion dollars in sales in 2016. That's almost twice the total e-commerce number. So mobile has the potential to be a much bigger impact on your business than even e-commerce has been in the past. And so engaging with consumers in those moments when they're thinking about what to buy and whether or not it's the right product becomes a very important moment for you to engage with your customers. Customer base. Uh, we talked about the notion on the next slide of impulse sales moments. Uh, I gave you the example of WTSO, wine still sold out. Uh, Steep and Cheap is another example of a company that runs sales. You can see the clock counting down there, how many seconds are left, how many products are left in your size. Um, and it's one of the really, I think, innovative ways that they've leveraged mobile to sell product and sell product that they want to get rid of. 
The next example is one of what we call product moments. Uh, there's a lot of products today that are complicated to use. Uh, this is an example of a product called Whistle. It's a pedometer that I put on my dog, and it provides – it enhances the product through the mobile service, so to speak. So on one hand, it gives me guidance as to whether or not my dog is meeting its goal for the day. But then if it sees something is wrong, like the battery needs to charge, it gives me a recommendation, hey, you need to charge the battery. It pushes out a notification. Or in this case, on the last side, you know, if, it, if my phone, if the device hasn't communicated with my phone to give me an update in a number of days, it's giving me instructions on what may be wrong. Uh, the next example that we have um, as we go through the, the, the customer journey, so to speak, is information transparency. And here's three examples from uh, Uber, eBay, um, and a shipping notification from the Apple Store. But the transparency of information is, a, in, a, in some ways, a form of self-service because it cuts down on the number of inbound calls that you get of consumers that simply have anxiety about what is it going to cost or where is my package. Um, and then finally, the last example that I have here is one of what I call loyalty moments, which are also marketing moments. And I use Starbucks because I think they're brilliant. Uh, for that 10 minutes from when you decide you want a coffee, you go to get a coffee, so you've got a coffee, they have capitalized on all of those mobile moments. Um, for all of, the, of you who've been in the Starbucks store, you've stood in line, and folks could be looking at email, they could be checking Facebook, but for a lot of customers, because this app is so engaging and it offers so much, not only the ability to pay, check my balance, uh, see what my, how many loyalty points I have after the purchase, but also if I'm standing in line, I'm, you know, I could be downloading a song and then listening to the song. So they do a great job of monetizing and engaging consumers in these mobile moments, um, and certainly this has paid off for them, as you can see below. Uh, this app is used by 10 million customers with an average of 5 million weekly transactions per week at a U.S. store, and I think a lot of companies would be happy if they were engaging and had mobile moments or 5 million mobile moments a week with their customers, let alone that these, uh, Starbucks has about half a billion dollars in the bank of stored value cards. So mobile moments really go throughout the entire customer journey. Uh, there's a few things happening here in 2014 as we look forward that are impacting um, Mobile and gate. Oops, let me pause there. So, so one of the common themes though that I would tell you you have to do is you have to iterate to serve your customers well. Uh, so you first have to get them opt-in. You need to understand who they are, serve them, learn about them, build trust, understand them better, be more relevant, and generate deeper insights. Um, this isn't about marketing. This isn't about selling right out of the out of the gate, so to speak. In order to achieve these breakthroughs in customer experience. You're going to have to first get them to engage. You're going to have to instrument your apps with analytics. You're going to have to understand them and generate insights about their behavior and what they want to do, and then continue to be more relevant to those customers, or you'll lose them and you'll lose your loyalty. Okay, so let's talk just for a minute here about why the stakes are so high in 2014. There's a lot going on. So on one hand, uh, we like to say mobile is going to sit at the epicenter of mind-blowing exit events. Uh, some of the early exit events that we've seen uh, so far, uh, Snapchat last year was offered $3 billion and turned it down. Uh, we've seen Viber Media go for $900 million. We saw WhatsApp go for $19 billion. Uh, we just saw Tango purchased. Uh, we've got both retailers, uh, companies like Rakuten out of Japan, Alibaba out of China, and Facebook here in the U.S. that are looking to buy large audiences. And I like to say in part, that's about generating insights and getting not only expanding the size of their audience that they can monetize, but also having greater insights into who customers are and how they're engaging with your brand. So the next major trend that we look at is the intersection of mobile and the physical world become a top priority. Um, I think this is one of the areas where analytics are really lacking, but some of the early examples that we see are with companies like uh, Walmart, uh, Target, and Walgreens that use context, in this case location, to switch to an in-store mode when somebody is in the store uh, but this is one of the areas where we really lack a lot of insight is it's really this intersection of the two worlds. Uh, the third example of a trend impacting in 2014 is what we call the use of mobile phones to drive physical layout. So uh, this is an example from a mall or a department store, and it's an example that we have from Cisco, where they use mobile phones and they track mobile phones to see where the traffic is, where people stop, what the heat maps are, and they're in places like malls and airports are using data about mobile phone owners to not only change the layout of stores, uh, they're doing things like changing the cleaning schedules in restrooms and so forth, but mobile context isn't just about on-device experiences, it's also impacting real-world experiences, and you have to use mobile analytics to understand those experiences. 
And then finally, uh, you'll see here the, the, you know, the same customer journey, but the competitive advantage really shifts to big data and analytics from experience design when we talk about mobile. Um, it's no longer okay to throw up a static experience, to build something, leave it out there for one to two years. Uh, customers expect that you're constantly iterating on that experience based on what you're learning and what you know, and you're constantly iterating to improve the performance of that experience. Uh, one of the big examples you know, that I say that we see today is there's a company uh, called King out of the UK or actually out of Ireland that uh, started trading today on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, they have a game called Candy Crush, which some of you may have played. And one of the reasons people are so addicted to something like Candy Crush is because it changes all the time. It gets cha more challenging over time. It becomes more interesting over time. And those are the kinds of expectations that customers have. And if you're not using analytics to continue to refine those experiences, uh, they'll fall short. All right, so let's jump in now to what kind of steps do you take to win in these mobile moments. Uh, this is a framework that we call, we go forward, uh, IDEA. It's, a, it's an acronym, I-D-E-A, that guides the design of mobile. So the first step, and I'll come back and step through each of these and give you examples, is to identify the mobile moments and their associated context. So what are those moments in time in the journey when you should be or could be engaging with your customers, designing the mobile engagement, engineering your platform processes and people for mobile. I would say engineer is just one of the four elements of this um, cycle, but it's also one of the most expensive. And then I would say analyze to results to monitor performance and optimize outcomes is one of the areas that's most like, probably that falls most short today when it comes to companies because so few companies do this well. So let me take you now through each of the, the four steps. So when we think about identifying mobile moments in their associated context, you first need to think about this customer journey. And what are, and the blue dots represent what are those mobile moments of truth? And then what is the context around those moments? Is it my location? Am I in a store or at home? Is it time relative to an event? And if you can understand that context and develop those insights, then you can eventually begin to anticipate or predict what your customers may need in that moment. But you really need to focus on these questions of what are your customer motivations, what does the customer need, and what is their context, and I think this is one of the areas where companies fall short, especially those companies that are simply shrinking or squeezing experiences and putting them on a small screen because they're not really thinking about the motivations or the needs of the customer who's on the go. So if we go to the next slide here, we'll look at an example. I'll take you back to the airline example. As you think about identifying these moments, Right, a couple hours ahead of time, I'm checking in, I'm going through security, uh, maybe I'm just 30 minutes before a flight, but if you just go back a slide quickly, you have to think about, well, what are the motivations? Like, who am I serving? Um, what are their needs? You know, they're anxious. They think they might be missing a flight. Uh, what is their context? They're 30 minutes before a flight. They're at the airport. They're probably within the vicinity of the gate. And then think about, okay, well, what is it that they need, right? So they need to confirm a flight, check in, maybe they're hurried. Um, and in this case, if I'm 30 minutes before a flight, I need to get to a destination, maybe rebook something, and I'm anxious. Uh, so you also need to take into account the, the emotional elements of those uh, contextual moments. We go forward. Uh, one of the things, too, as I take a step back here, is you have to know what context is important for you and for your customers. Uh, today, so much of context is based on location, and so much of it is based on uh, time or time relative to an event, which is what we call situational context. Uh, there's also behavior that you've observed in the past, as well as preferences that your customers may have given you. And then there's also emotions. Um, if I'm 30 minutes or an hour before the flight and I'm running late, or if I have a connection to make and it looks like I'm going to miss that connection, then I become very anxious and you need to take those things into account. Uh, also, you know, many of you probably don't have a strategy for wearables today and you're not thinking about wearables, but one of the things that you need to be aware of is there's a phenomenal amount of new information, new contextual information uh, that's being generated. And as you look, you know, two, three, four years out, you just want to have your eyes wide open, so to speak, as to what all the different opportunities are. So if we look at the next slide, um, and I won't, trust me, I won't spend a lot of time here. I know it's an eye chart, but then you need to think about designing this engagement. So if you look, if you're a day away, one to two hours out, uh, if somebody's about to board a flight, you know, on a day of regular operations versus irregular operations, right, you actually need to step through these journey maps and go back to some of the questions that we ask, like who are we serving, what is their context, what are their needs, what are their motivations. And I've blown that up a little bit on the next slide so you can get a quick look. Um, and this is an example of a case study that I wrote about United Airlines. And as they went through this process and they did ethnographic research to really understand who they were serving, what is their context, what is their needs, uh, they came up with a few core ideas that really helped them transform the experience on their mobile phones and transform their customer experience. And as we look at the next slide, 
uh, there's three areas that I wanted to point out um, in terms of the design elements. One of them is proactive notifications. Uh, the second is mobile boarding passes. And the third is an opportunity to book a new flight on days of irregular operations. Uh, so as we look at the next slide, I'll just show you some really quick examples. Um, here you can see that they're pushing out notifications, uh, what time my flight is going, it's landed, it's delayed, um, and certainly the app on the, the, it's the home screen on the left-hand side that gives me the ability to hit buttons and take action um, while I'm moving through an airport. On the next slide, what we see is, you know, mobile boarding passes, right? They help meet the expectations of the mobile mind shifted, right? That's on my phone. It's taken care of. I can go directly to security. And then finally, on the next slide, you can see a few screenshots from days uh, when there's the real moment of truth. On the left-hand side, my flight has been canceled. Um, it shows me that it's been canceled. There's an, a, a change to my itinerary. And if you click forward, then you can see that United, what it does is it gives me some control by allowing me to choose one of two flights um, to take instead of the one that's been canceled. And so they give me control, and then they allow me to self-serve also in this moment of need or what's a real moment of truth for them. If you click forward, there you go. You can see the details. So to do this, though, you know, the E becomes very important here because you really need to engineer your platforms, processes, and people. All of them are impact, not only impacted by mobile, but there's a lot of change that has to go on here in order to provide and create the kinds of experiences that we're describing. So the first one that we look at is process. Uh, this is a photograph that I took in the Denver airport on Saturday. And a lot of you have probably seen the same thing in the airport that you travel through, right? But there's a lot of kiosks, encounters that are simply dark. Uh, consumers are moving, uh, are using mobile boarding passes. Almost 20% of domestic flights these days have a domestic boarding pass. And there simply isn't a need to go to a counter and speak to an agent. So the process at the airport has changed, and you can see it in this empty space. The next is the people. Um, there are a lot of mobile efforts early on that were very one-off and project-based, but what happened is, is the business teams ran into a wall. Uh, they couldn't create the kind of experiences that we're talking about without working very closely with their tech team. So there has to be a lot of collaboration between the tech and the business side of the business. Uh, the talent that you need is different. You have to have user experience experts, machine learning, big data developers, and you need to have a culture with co-located teams, uh, folks that are agile, focused on multiple releases per year, and they're willing to put products into the market uh, that are what we call are minimally viable so that you can monitor them, you know, test them, and you know, continue to release and fail fast, so to speak. Uh, so there has to be a huge culture change that has to go on. And then finally, if we think about the, uh, the platforms on the next slide, this is where a lot of the heavy lifting really happens at the platform stage when we think about all the different devices. Uh, if you just click forward there. The, um, So at the platform level, there's a few things that happen. Um, okay, and I'll assume the slide is going to click forward here in a second. Uh, but on one hand, you know, certainly a lot of people engage uh, with you today through a mobile phone and through a PC. A lot of your customers may also be engaging with you through a tablet. You know, going forward, there could be even more devices, right? So apps are really demanding that enterprises build web services layer and APIs to access the data and functionality. And your physical and digital worlds are colliding or they're complementing one another. So you have to really understand the implications and understand the implications of what other kinds of data that you need to collect in order to be able to serve your customers in these mobile moments. So and I'll give you, as you click forward here, right? So and if I think about the example that you did with United, this is certainly very conceptual, but they had to do a substantial amount of platform work to support their new mobile app, and it took almost a couple of years to do that. And so when you see companies that you feel like have paused or paused their innovation, so to speak, a lot of times it has to do is because they can't go forward until they do some of this heavy lifting. And then finally, the last stage of this is what we call the analytics and how you continue to improve upon the performance and use analytics to refine the design of services around mobile moments. And I'll give you just a, an example here, and then I'll give you a bit of a framework as we click forward. Uh, the first thing I would tell you is that too few – you can go click forward. Uh, too few companies have a mobile analytics solution in place. Uh, when we surveyed professionals last year, only 46% of them had a mobile analytics solution in place, uh, let alone you know, the, the depth, the breadth of what they may need. Uh, click to the next slide, please. Um, and this is an example I'll give you. This is outside of the airline example, but it's a very good example that I think a lot of folks can relate to. Um, when you think about analyzing results to monitor performance, uh, this is an example from a, a real estate company in China called Anjuk, and they were very concerned because they had conversion rates were strangely low in the evening, which was their busiest time. 
They did some A-B testing, and they realized that one of the things that was happening is agents had a fixed amount of money that, or a cap that was set each day for spending, and they had reached those caps before they got into the evening and some of the more lucrative or some of the better customers. And so some of the best listings were no longer available in the evenings, so they had to reconfigure their algorithms to ensure that the best audience plus offered analytics to the agents to increase the spend. Uh, so it helped drive not only their business forward, it helped increase their conversion rate, and it helped drive their business forward. Uh, because a lot of things you think you know about consumers you don't know, and so doing A-B testing is really important in terms of driving the design of an app. So the last thing I wanted to do here on the last slide is take you through an example uh, from a framework that my colleague Jeffrey Hammond put together. And this really focuses on the notion that holistic mobile measurement uh, there's three classes of metrics here uh, that we'll talk through. So on one hand, um, you know, I would tell you this comes from conversations with mobile app developers and infrastructure providers, and there's three major classes in descending order of strategic importance. So if we look at the bottom first, uh, the mobile metrics, these are really hard to measure, but they're critical to long-term success. Uh, in terms of, you know, getting increased budget to fund your mobile efforts going forward, you need to be able to show business results. So things like total revenue generated by the channel, average revenue per user. As we come up the left-hand side, there's engagement metrics, and these show how different customers use your app or don't. Uh, so engagement metrics, for example, help measure increased product awareness, brand identification, and customer loyalty by providing feedback on how different groups of people may use a mobile app and what can be done to match development resources to the best possible customer experience. So common engagement metrics might be uh, the initial app experience, retention, um, average time in the app and how that changes over time. And then finally at the top are what we call the technical metrics that provide feedback on performance platforms and crashes, right? It's really hard to engage customers and employees with a mobile app that doesn't work properly on their mobile device or is slow to respond when they use it. And with all the different types of devices out there, it's like also really impossible to adequately test all of the different combinations of devices across carriers. So collecting some of these technical metrics will help you do that. And then finally, you know, if we go across the top, timing is everything, right? We like to say late metrics are useless metrics. Um, and so you have to determine the information half-life or the feedback that you intend to collect. Um, Real-time feedback uh, guides adaptive apps to the next best action. So they offer the possibility to create breakthrough experiences that change the way business gets done. So if you think about something like Waze and real-time feedback to alert people to take a different route to work. Uh, there's operational feedback, warns of impending problems. Um, so there may be something impacting the performance of your app, like the carrier's upgraded to the OS. Uh, there's a new device that is crashing your app. There's a lot of things that could go wrong here that you need to measure. And then finally, historical feedback guides, business decisions, and development sprints. Uh, historical data um, can be classified as any feedback point that's more than 24 hours old. And some metrics just aren't that important to the ongoing operation of your app. Uh, but because there's not really that much you can do to change the data that's being produced, uh, but sometimes looking at information and trending data over time can be very valuable. So with that, let me hand things off. But thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Julie, uh, for an excellent overview uh, of how to think about uh, uh, developing mobile apps and also delivering awesome mobile apps. Uh, again, my name is Kalyan Ramanathan. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Criticism. And uh, I'm very excited to be presenting this webinar with, with Julie. Uh, so let me start out with where Julie ended. And, uh, you know, as Julie mentioned in the idea framework, uh, you got to start out by identifying your key mobile moments. You've got to design the mobile engagement. You obviously have to engineer your systems. But then lastly, and very importantly, you have to analyze the outcomes. Uh, you have to measure and track all the right metrics. You have to optimize these metrics. And then you have to constantly iterate uh, to ensure that your mobile experiences work well. Now, this last step, uh, analyzing, measuring, optimizing, is indeed very, very important. And why is that so? Uh, because uh, you know, if you don't measure your app experience and your app performance, uh, it will fundamentally affect your mobile app. Uh, it will fundamentally affect the users of these mobile apps. And here's a perfect example of uh, why this is so. Um, Criticism uh, did a survey towards the uh, late uh, last year, and what we identified was that if the if the mobile app experience and expect if the mobile app experience and performance doesn't meet the expectations of your users. 
65% of your users are going to be installing these apps. 65% of these users are not going to be using your apps. And so here is a perfect example of where you have lost a customer and a user. You, don't, you no longer have the engagement with the user. You no longer have the interaction with the user. You no longer have the ability to interact with this user. And that's real revenue that you're going to be losing with your business. And that is going to doom your mobile app as well as the, your mobile strategy. So how does criticism help? Uh, and what do we do? Uh, fundamentally, we are a mobile app performance management company, and we help our customers run their apps faster, better, and smarter. Uh, we have built a solution to manage the experience and performance of your mobile apps, and we have built it from the ground up thinking about mobile worlds and mobile ecosystems. Uh, our founders uh, are, are mobile folks. They know how to build excellent mobile apps. They also know what it takes to run mobile apps. Uh, we have built a solution that uh, works across all mobile platforms. Uh, so we support uh, iOS, uh, Android, Windows, uh, Android NDK, HTML5. Uh, we've also built a solution that scales to handle the, the biggest mobile scale that you can throw at us. Uh, we support tens of thousands of apps and customers today. Uh, we also monitor over a billion monthly active users on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, so, so criticism has built a solution that, that truly uh, helps, you in, uh, helps you monitor and manage the experience as well as the performance of your mobile apps. Uh, finally, we are also uh, funded by a set of folks who understand mobile well. Um, you guys see Google Ventures here. Obviously, they are the folks behind Android. They know what it takes to, to, to deliver and, and develop great apps. They also know and understand that experience and performance are critical elements um, in order to make an app successful. So if we are the company we keep, uh, we keep a uh, very good company indeed. Uh, we have customers from all walks of life. Uh, you know, we obviously do very well in the B2C space uh, where, um, you know, especially verticals like technology, internet, gaming, uh, media, et cetera, where a lot of apps, um, uh, you know, indeed, uh, you know, are driving transactions uh, with customers. We're also seeing excellent transactions uh, within the enterprise space, uh, where enterprises are now starting to develop and deliver mobile apps so as to enable their their employees. And the performance and expectation, performance and experience of this mobile app is extremely critical. Um, so, so we do very well across a broad swath of verticals, across a broad set of uh, customers, and towards the end of the deck, I will come back and explain to you some of the real tangible ROIs that we have provided to some of these customers. Now, let me step back here and talk about why is mobile app performance and experience management so hard. Uh, fundamentally, what, what we're seeing right now is that the apps of today have become very complex. If you think about a, a typical app of today, uh, the, the app is talking to many cloud services on the back end. So if you're talking about a B2C app, uh, you're typically uh, you know, looking at cloud services uh, of the social kind, uh, Facebook, Google+, uh, uh, Twitter, et cetera. You have uh, interfaces to messaging systems. You interface to payment systems like PayPal, Square, et cetera. And then you also interface to, uh, to CDNs uh, so that your content can be delivered very, very quickly to the, to the users of these apps. And now, on the other hand, if you're looking at a B2E app, you're typically interfacing to an to a enterprise authentication system, an ERP system, a CRN system, and so on and so forth. Now, the app also talks to many of these cloud services over a wide variety of network. Uh, you have Wi-Fi, you have ca uh, carriers, you have Bluetooth, you name it. And the performance of these networks uh, varies based on the networks and also the region and the geo where these networks are. And then finally, when you think about the, the, the client side itself, uh, you know, you have a real matrix problem. Here. You, have, you have many devices, many OSs, many versions. And, uh, you know, the, these things are only exploding at this point. So the net net of the slide is that, you know, you're, going to, you're looking at, you know, hundreds, uh, you know, if not, you know, millions of combinations uh, that you would have to test uh, and, and validate in order to ensure the performance of your app. So how does criticism help address this problem? Uh, fundamentally, as I mentioned before, we provide a comprehensive mobile application performance management solution. Our solution uh, monitors all aspects of the mobile app, both from a real-time and from a real user perspective. Uh, what does this mean? So from a real-time perspective, uh, we monitor all the cloud services that your app talks to, as well as the performance of these cloud services. We look at all the networks that these apps are, uh, inter are communicating through, and we monitor the performance of these networks. We also monitor the device, OS, 
uh, as well as the uh, the versions of the apps itself. And, and we monitor uh, attributes such as crashes and handle exceptions and so on and so forth, which which then provide you a comprehensive uh, view into the performance of the app. Now, once we have monitored all of these metrics, we provide you actionable and deep diagnostic data so that you can very quickly identify a problem, prioritize a problem, and then troubleshoot the problem when you run into an issue. All of these, uh, the entire criticism solution is built on a plan, uh, built on a mobile platform, a mobile platform that offers comprehensive support for every mobile device and OS out there. Um, that scales to the mobile scale, um, you know, millions of users, uh, you know, tens of thousands of, uh, of devices and, and OSs. And then finally, uh, our solution is also built on a SaaS platform. And what that means is that you can very quickly adopt the criticism solution. And you don't need uh, back-end IT folks uh, working to set up your, your IT infrastructure and your monitoring systems. The core capabilities of the solution uh, you know, support the full life cycle of the mobile application performance management. So it starts out, as I mentioned before, by monitoring all aspects of the app performance. So we monitor the cloud services, we monitor the, the latencies, the error rates of the cloud services, we monitor crashes in the app, we monitor exceptions in the app. Uh, once we have all these metrics in place, you can slice and dice uh, these metrics. You can also get alerted when, uh, when any of these metrics, uh, you know, go, go above the bar that you may have set. Once you have a problem, once you have identified an issue with your app performance, you can prioritize the, the issues that you see with the app itself. You can prioritize based on the number of impacted users. You can prioritize based on geos where these impacted users, uh, where these users are impacted. And you can also pinpoint the users, the specific users that are uh, impacted by your, by your uh, app performance issue. Once you prioritize the issues, the next thing that you want to do is to quickly isolate and triage the problem. Uh, and we give you lots of capabilities so that you can very quickly identify the root cause of the problem. We give you deep down track trace so that you can identify the specific code where you see a problem. We can also tie the app performance issue with the user workflow so that you can very quickly identify what the user might have been doing, where they might have been using the app uh, so, that, um, so that you can identify the root cause of the issue itself. And then finally, we provide the ability to, to trend and, um, and, and report on your app performance. Uh, what you want to do, obviously, is to look at your app performance version to version across devices, across geos, and so on and so forth. And criticism provides you the ability to slice and dice this data and also uh, report on all these metrics, which you can then provide to your business owners. So what makes criticism unique. Uh, there are really five things uh, that stand out in the criticism solution. First and foremost, we provide complete support for the mobile stack. Uh, we monitor the apps, we monitor the versions of the app as well as the OSs that are deployed on the device. Uh, we, man we monitor the device and all of its characteristics. We monitor the network that the app is communicating through. And then lastly, we also monitor the cloud service APIs that the app is interfacing with. Uh, we provide an integrator and a single pane of glass that allows you to look at all these metrics. So you don't have to now go to Apple's App Store uh, to, to find out crash details. You don't have to look at a different solution, a different backend solution to look at you know, how your cloud services or your network is performing. Uh, you know, Criticism provides all of those solutions in a single pane of glass so that you can very quickly I correlate this information and identify problems. Um, as I mentioned before, our focus is mobile and mobile alone. Uh, you know, we excel uh, in understanding the mobile, op uh, mobile environment, the mobile ecosystem, and the mobile operating systems. Um, we work at mobile scale. Uh, we monitor a billion monthly active users today, and that's a big number. And, uh, you know, we are... We know what it takes to support scales like this, and we can very easily uh, support any scale that you throw at us. And then finally, you know, we have over tens of thousands of uh, apps and customers today. And, you know, that speaks to the, the value that we are providing to these customers. That speaks to, you know, what, um, you know, our ability to support customers across many verticals and provide significant, uh, you know, benefits to these customers. So here's a proof in the pudding. And I want to talk to, you know, three customers and what we have done for these customers in terms of managing the performance and the experience of their, of their mobile apps. Uh, Urban Outfitter, uh, I'm sure many of you know who they are. Uh, they are a big retailer, and uh, they are using us to monitor both their 
their business to compute uh, business to consumer as well as uh, business to employee apps and uh, the customer uh, was struggling with uh, with performance issues before they implemented criticism uh, as you can see from the slide we have dramatically improved the performance of the app and uh, they are starting to see significant revenue improvement as a result of the performance improvements uh, Hearst uh, is uh, another customer of ours who was struggling with with uh, uh, with star ratings of their apps itself, and by implementing criticism, as you can see, we have improved the, the star rating of their app from two star to four star. As many of you on the phone know out here, uh, you know, improving the star rating of, of your apps, uh, you know, improves the brand of your product, improves the adoption of your product, and uh, finally improves the revenue uh, that you get through your app and through your through your services. And by improving, by providing this improvement uh, in terms of the quality of the product itself, uh, you know, Hearst has seen significant ROI from the criticism implementation. Uh, lastly, DocuSign um, um, primarily uses us to, again, monitor the performance of their app and improve the performance of the app. Uh, but, the, but the byproduct of the Docu DocuSign implementation has also been the ability for this customer to very quickly uh, iterate on their app. Now, using criticism, they are very quickly able to identify performance issues, uh, you know, bugs and uh, quality issues in their product so that they're, they can they can schedule these issues in their scrum cycles, in their in their agile cycles and very quickly, uh, you know, deliver uh, quality products to their to their end users. Uh, with that said, you know, I, I want to turn it over to Tim, uh, who will now lead the Q&A session of, uh, of this webinar. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Kalyan, and of course, thanks, Julie. Uh, great information. We're just going to field a few questions since we're running a little late. Um, first one's for you, Julie. Um, the question is, what are some of the challenges that mobile teams face as they implement the IDEA framework? So the challenges that they face, I would tell you, Tim, is that a lot of companies just don't understand the impact that mobile is having on their business. They still view it as an isolated project. Um, in part, that's due to lack of vision, and in part, as you see from some of the numbers, it's just due to a lack of ability to measure, like, the impact that mobile is having on their business because they don't have analytics in place, and they just don't have that big-picture perspective. Great. Uh, thanks, Julie. And there's, a, there's another one here for you. Um, what goals should customers target as they implement the framework? So I think that's always going to be dependent upon the business. You know, if you are somebody that's at a CPG company or a manufacturing company, you're looking for more opportunities to engage with your customers. They tend to lean more towards engagement metrics. If you're in the retail or the travel space, uh, with retail, it's going to be less about e-commerce, and I think that's something that trips up a lot of companies, and it's going to be more about influence sales. In something like travel, it's going to be more about that direct revenue number. But that really depends on the industry that you're in, the company, uh, how important online is to your business, and you know where you are in terms of mobile maturity today. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, for Kalyan, I believe, uh, does criticism require any server-side instrumentation? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, no, criticism does not require any server-side instrumentation. Um, the way we work is that uh, we provide you a very lightweight SDK that you integrate into your app. And uh, once you have uh, released this, this app into a, an app store, uh, whether it be a consumer app store or an enterprise app store, criticism can then uh, get uh, performance information about the app, uh, the crashes, about, uh, crashes exceptions uh, around the app, the cloud services that the app talks to, uh, and so on and so forth. And another one for Kalyan. Are there benchmarks for performance and experience that you guys have seen? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys before, uh, you know, we monitor over tens of thousands of apps today and over a billion monthly active users. Um, and a byproduct of monitoring so many apps and so many users is that we can provide anonymized benchmarks in terms of what do we see in the marketplace today. Um, in the in the next uh, week or so, we in fact uh, do plan to release a report uh, around uh, these kinds of benchmarks. Uh, and example, you know, elements of this report will, you know, include things like, you know, what is the what is the average crash rate uh, that an app should see across, you know, various OSs and various devices. Uh, what what are the number of cloud services? How many cloud services do we typically see for a particular app? What's the latency that we see across you know some of the common cloud services uh, that we are monitoring in, within our system? 
So look forward to uh, you know seeing a benchmark like this um, being released by Criticism very soon. And uh, if you're not in our mailing list, uh, you know feel free to look up uh, our website and and register to get to get these kinds of data. Great, thanks, Kalyan. Looks like we're running a little low on time. Unfortunately, there's a lot of questions that we couldn't get to, but we'll reply directly back to you. Uh, first things first, it goes without saying, we've gotten a lot of uh, questions. Uh, this was a, a ton of great information from Julie, a lot to take in. So we have recorded this webinar and we'll be sending the uh, video on demand out to all of the attendees for, uh, for consumption. And also, as previously mentioned, all live attendees, uh, webinar attendees, will receive Julie's new book, uh, The Mobile Mind Shift, Engineer Your Business to Win in the Mobile Moment. The book release date is tentatively June 24, 2014. Uh, if you'd like a copy of her book, uh, please respond to the follow-up email that we're going to be sending in the next day or two, which includes the video on demand. Uh, follow up to that and reply with your name and mailing address, and we will send you the book as soon as it's available. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, both Julie and Callion for their time today, and we'd, we'd like to thank everyone for attending, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, Tim, for having me. Thank you, Julie, and thank, thank you to the attendees. Um, again, I think I, I do want to iterate, reiterate one other point um, before we close. Uh, so as, as Julie and, and, and we at Criticism have, have, have said in this webinar, uh, you know, your, your mobile apps uh, you know, have to work well in order to wow your customers and in order to meet your, your business goals. Uh, you have to deliver on the performance and the experience uh, expectations of your customers. And you have to look at solutions uh, like criticism. Um, you know, whether you choose to work with criticism or any other vendor, uh, that's up to you. Uh, but, but you definitely have to look at performance management solutions uh, to ensure that these, these apps uh, you know, do meet the expectations of your users. If you want to talk to us, uh, feel free to drop us an email at uh, info at criticism .com. Uh, uh, but, but equally importantly, uh, uh, you know, if you want to use us, uh, feel free to sign up for our product at uh, criticism.com. Uh, it's a very, very simple uh, implementation, and in a matter of a few minutes, uh, you will start to see real data in terms of, you know, how your app is performing uh, and how your users are, are experiencing this app. Uh, in the production and in the live environment. Thank you very much.